Thank you, Lindsay, and thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us for this workshop. Um, I'm going to share, I'm going to start sharing my screen um, here. So I can tell you what we are going to do today. This is what I was thinking. First, I was thinking about discussing a little bit what Nearpod is. You might be familiar with uh, this tool or you might not. So it's just a very general description of what Nearpod is. And also the reasons why I like uh, Nearpod and why I use it. Um, then I will discuss some reports, teaching resources and other things that you can find on Nearpod. Maybe we can have some time for questions if there's any question there. And I want you to experience Nearpod as a student and also as a teacher. So uh, once you go through Nearpod as a student, we will have more time for questions. And when you are working on Nearpod as a teacher creating the activities, um, I was thinking about sending you to breakout rooms so I can go through all the breakout rooms and answer individual questions. And maybe you can share your screen with me and uh, it would be easier, I think. At this point, whenever you have a question, just let me know and I will go to your breakout room and help you with that. Well, let's start with what Nearpod is. It's a tool and that's how I use it. It's a tool basically to uh, help me in class. I use it for face-to-face -face and remote classes. And uh, I use it because it allows you to include a lot of different activities basically to uh, engage your, your, your students. It's fun and it's easy to use. Um, and those are part of the reasons why I use it. First, first thing, because it's easy, not just to create lessons on Nearpod, but it's also easy to share uh, the link uh, with your students. They do not need to create an account or nothing like that. So it's easy to use, easy to create lessons and easy to include it um, in your classes as another tool uh, for your classes. You can create free accounts, and all what we are going to do today is going to be just with the free account. Okay, so there are other things, other activities that you could do if you have a paid account, but um, I assume that you don't have one. So we're just going to create a free account today. It's very streamlined. Everything is in one place. So you can probably do the same things that you do with the Nearpod, you could do it with different apps. If you include, uh, I don't know, Canvas and PlayPosit and Google Earth. And yes, that's true. You can do all that. But what I like about Nearpod is that you don't have to jump from one app to another. Everything is in there. That saves class time. And, um, and um, basically, there, there are no distractions. As I told you, uh, you can include a variety of activities just to uh, make your classes more, more engaged and you can get immediate feedback. You can include um, quizzes, for example, to check for understanding, but also you can monitor uh, all the activities that your students are doing and see, for example, if they are failing in one particular question. Well, question then you know that you have you you can go there and explain that in more detail you know what they are doing all the time you have control over the presentation and you get results in real time that's something that i really like about this as i told you it's a great tool for remote classes but i also use this for uh, use it for face-to-face -face classes um because again it well it, it, it allows you not to use paper in class. You don't need photocopies or nothing like that. The only thing your students will need is uh, a laptop in class. Um, and, uh, and there are a lot of things that you, you can do. And we will discuss some of those things. Um, let's see. Let's talk a little bit about what you will find once when, when you open the Nearpod. All this that you have here on your left is what I'm going to discuss now. Uh, teacher resources, for example. Well, with teacher resources, here you can find um, 
lessons already created on Nearpod on a lot of different subjects. Like for example, those that you have in here, those are all the subjects that they have. If you click on those, you will find um, lessons already created on Nearpod that you can uh, that you can take for your classes. Um, on reports, there is another thing that is very interesting from Near, Nearpod is that uh, you can use this not during your class, but later if you want to grade your students or give them grades for participation or or just see how how they are doing, um, you will find reports for all the sessions that you open on Nearpod. Like for example, here for this particular presentation, I have three different uh, three different sections. Two of them are live participation. The other one, it was student pace, and we will talk about this too. You have you have control over the uh, presentation when you share a link for um, for live participation, but you can also generate a different link so students can use Nearpod at home to review or or just for other activities that that you might assign them. So once you uh, once the students have joined the lesson and, and and the lesson is done, basically, you will get reports like this. Um, you can see those reports just to get a general summary, or you can go activity by activity and see how your students made on each activity. Things like this. You can also see, for example, if they completed the activity or not. And again, if you want to use um, those reports just to adjust your lesson plans for the next day. This is a great way to do it because you can see where they were, where they uh, were failing, and and just change it or go over it on your next class. Um, let's see. last thing that I want to do, well, this is also about the, re the reports that you can get. Uh, you can click on, on what they did and see the responses. That's it. The last thing that I want to talk about is how to share a link. As I was telling you before, you can generate a link for live participation. And that means that you are controlling the presentation all the time. But once you um, once you close the session, they do not have access to the Nearpod anymore. Then you can generate a student paste link and put it on Canvas or just share it with them uh, the way you used to communicate with them. So they can use the Nearpod to work on their own, basically. Any questions? No questions now. Okay. Quick question. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Um, when you create a Nearpod lesson, um, can you create it at first uh, for just live and like say say you forgot to create a student paste link? Yes. Uh, or does it generate? Does Nearpod generate both links automatically? No. Um, you can generate the. What you are doing is you are creating the uh, you are creating the lesson in Nearpod. It will be like if you are working on a presentation on Google Slides, for example, or a PowerPoint, and then you decide how to share that presentation. You can share it just for live participation, or you can share it for student base. Okay, so if I if I first chose to you know uh, share it live. Then later I go back after the lesson and I can generate a student paste link. Yeah. Okay. Actually, actually, that's what I do with my with uh -huh. my classes. For example, uh -huh. I teach my class with live participation, and then on Canvas, I I I put a link for student paste just so the students can use the Nearpod for review. Or sometimes if if I if I put their um, PDFs with grammar, for example, they can mm -hmm. use it for review. One more question along those lines: when you when you post that link in Canvas, is it um, can you embed the link or is it just a link to take you outside? Yes. 
Oh, it's embeddable. Great. It's embeddable. Yes. Great. And that, and that's actually the last thing we are going to do today is uh, after you have created your Nearpod, we are going to embed it in, in cool. Canvas. Cool. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? No. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to share with you a link for the Nearpod, but first I want to show you how it looks like in my screen when I share when 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 I'm teaching with Nearpod. Basically, what I do is that I have Zoom, and I have the Nearpod. Okay, so um, on one side I um, I have all my students on on Zoom, and on the other part of my screen, I have the near, but how do you say that? It's not that I divide the, the screen so I can see both Zoom and Nearpod at the same time. And that's what I recommend you to do now. You should have the Zoom in one part and the uh, Nearpod on the other on the other part. Um, Lindsay, do you want to share the link for the Nearpod? Let's see. Yes, let me put that in the chat for everyone. Thank you. So once you click on that link, it's going to ask you to put your name. Just use a, new, a, a nickname because I'm going to be sharing my screen with results. And maybe you don't want everybody to know that you got a zero on a quiz or things like that. So just use a nickname. And again, this is all what you have to do with uh, with your students. They do not need uh, they do not need um, an account on your pod or nothing like that. It's just a link that you share with them. You can put it on Canvas, or if you're teaching remotely like me, like myself, you you can put it on on the chat. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. I'm still waiting for one more. Good. So, as you can see, I can control the presentation, but you already have seen all, all those uh, slides. So, I can just jump and go to the one that I want, which is this one. Everybody, everybody has seen the uh, presentation on Nearpod, right? Yes? Good. So those are the different accounts that you can have on Nearpod. The one that we are going to use is the Silver account, which is free. Um, and there are some differences with the other ones. The most important one for me is the storage space that you have. If you're using a silver account, uh, I teach in different institutions and uh, um, I have um, an account, a gold account for one of those institutions and a silver account for the other two. And basically you can store it 15, 20 presentations there. So if you want to continue using Nearpod on a free account, you're probably going to have to delete some of those presentations and, uh, and just um, get some more, more storage space in there. But 15, 20, if, if you're not crazy about putting virtual reality, uh, activities and videos and things like that, 15 or 20 um, presentations, you, you, you can store those in uh, using a silver account. 
So um, those are the different content and activities that you can include in Nearpod. As you can see, you can include slides, you can include videos, web content, et cetera, et cetera. You can also include activities, different kind of activities. And we are not gonna discuss them all because we are not gonna have time for all of them. So let's go with those. For content, we're gonna discuss, well, slides also, we're gonna create one slide. Video, web content, uh, uh, virtual reality, field trip, slideshow, and the PDF viewer. Well, let's start with the PDF viewer. As you can see, if you click on, on the PDF, you will be able to navigate the PDF with, without me having to give you any more access or nothing like that. This is great, for example, when, when you have to share with your students more than a paragraph, for example, or if you want to include, for example, three different pages or four pages, things like that. Instead of just sharing the document on Canvas, you can just put it on the Nearpod and they will have access to it just in one place. Um, with the school account, they can also write on the PDF, but not with the free account. So let's go to videos. I'm not sure if you're familiar with tools like PlayPosit or Edpuzzle. Those are tools that you can use to edit videos. Well, you can do the same with Nearpod. You can edit videos. You can take videos from, um, from YouTube or videos that you have on your laptop and just edit them. Uh, edit them. I'm going to let you let you experience um, how it will uh, look like with one video, but I need you to answer the three first questions that you are going to find there. You just need to select A, a or B. That's it. That's all what you have to do. But I need you, and, and don't worry if you don't get it right. It's going to be in Spanish because that's what oh, I did. How do you see it? Uh, actually not. It's llevar, <laughs> but it's fine. It doesn't matter if you get it right or wrong, uh, but I need you to answer because I want to share with you my screen so you can see um, how it looks like on the teacher side when you're students respond okay so go ahead You can stop there. Let me share my screen so you can see what I have in here. This is what you see when your students are answering the questions. You can navigate those and see how they did. For example, on the first one, you can see if someone did not respond here. For example, I have that 20% uh, of my students did not respond to this one. And again, you can jump from one to another and, and see how they are answering. Also, it's great because you can see where they are. You don't need to uh, you don't need to ask them, oh, did you finish or not? You know when they finish because you can see it in here. 
Okay, so you can just wait until the last one and make sure they all, all of the answer. And if you see that there is one in which um, a lot of them got it wrong, then you can discuss that one without having to watch the whole video. Good. Bien, let's see. Let's continue with this. You can also uh, add web content. Like for example, here I added a Wikipedia page about Peruvian cuisine. And could you do this just taking a screenshot and adding it to uh, PowerPoint, for example? Yes, you could do that. But the nice thing about this is that all the links that you see in there are going to work. And again, the students are still on Nearpod. They do not have to jump from one up to another. Good. You can do this with something as simple as a Wikipedia page, but you can do something like this, for example, and include a, a Google Earth project. Not sure if you're familiar with Google Earth. The thing about this is that um, you, you have to click on it to have access. Uh, it is a little bit slow, so let me share. Are you familiar with Google Earth project? Yes, so you know how to navigate them. Yes, exactly. People can scroll at their own, own pace, exactly, yes. Um, so you can do things like this. Basically, if you can generate a link, you can include it in uh, Nearpod. Um, let's see. Hi, Olga. Hi. I'm going to share with you, or I'm not sure if Kelly already did it. Yes, thank you. A link to the near pod. Good. Um, let's continue with this. This is a slideshow. Well, this is a presentation inside the presentation. Maybe uh, you don't want your students uh, to have access to the whole presentation because you want them to focus on one activity, but you need more than one slide for a particular activity. This is the way you will do it with a slideshow. Basically here, if you click on the slides that you have on the left, one, two, three, you can move from one, two, three, and that's it. You cannot move anywhere else on the presentation because I'm not allowing you to, to do it, right? I use this um, slideshow for role play activities, for example. So I tell them, you're gonna be role A, you're gonna be role B, just keep on slide one or slide two. And then together you have to answer the questions on the slide three, things like that. Another good thing about this is that uh, when you are teaching remotely, they still have access to the near pod. So if you send them to a break, breakup room, they can see the activity on the breakup room because it's on the near pod. Versus if you are sh just sharing your screen, once you send them to the breakup room, they cannot see the activity anymore. Okay. Um, and let's go to, well, I'm not sure if there are questions about any of those activities. Let's go with the last one, the field trip. This is basically virtual reality inside the near pod. You know, you can click on it and turn it around. This is great. This, uh, this is great, for example, if you are teaching directions you can tell them, I mean, this this um, is a very simple one, but there, there are some of them in which you can virtually walk on the streets, for example. So if you're teaching directions, how to give directions, you can tell them, okay, take this street and then turn left. Uh, what can you see there? Or where is the supermarket? Things, things like that to give instructions. 
that's how I use it. All those that we have seen are um, content. You will just be adding content on Nearpod, but you can also add activities. And those are the ones that we are going to discuss. We are actually not going to discuss Flipgrid um, because I don't think we will have time for that. But basically, if you have a Flip, Flipgrid uh, account, again, you will generate the link, just put it in there, and the students do not have to go from Nearpod to Flipgrid. Flipgrid will be inside the Nearpod. Okay. But we are going to discuss matching pairs, quizzes, draw it. Uh, the collaborative board, which is a very cool tool, and fill in the blank. Let's go with matching pairs so you can experience this. You can put them um, instructions. So just click on the image and click on the name that goes with that image. If it's correct, it will disappear. And as you can see, there is a timer. It's up to you if you want to add the timer or not. Excuse me. I have yep. a question. So, but like when I, I, I did the activity, right? And is it, am I doing the activity and the other students? They, uh, so we are not sharing the activity. I am doing my own activity. You're doing your own activity. It is like if, for example, I give you a piece of paper and you are crossing words so it's, and... It's and like a know. worksheet. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now... But because before I was like going around the square really fast and I thought, oh, wow, I must think I'm crazy. You know, like, and this, but no, so like it's independent work. Yes, for, exactly. Okay. You have your own Nearpod and... Mm -hmm. uh, Susanna and Tom and Nora, everybody has a different screen for the Nearpod. So what you are doing on your Nearpod is just me, the one who can see it as a teacher. I can see your uh, your results, mm -hmm. but not, not your classmates. Okay. Let me share with you what I can see. This is how it looks like. On my side. So I can click here. If I don't remember the activity, I just can click here to see uh, what the questions were. And now I can see who completed the activity, the results that, uh, that you got, and also how many tries. So one thing is that you get four out of four with four attempts. And another thing is you get uh, if you get four out of four with 10 attempts, for example, that will be telling me that there is a problem with this vocabulary. So I, again, I could adjust my lesson plan and work, maybe add another activity um, to work with vocabulary, okay? Uh, if I see that everybody is getting this right, then maybe I can skip all the other activities that I had prepared for this particular uh, topic. Another thing, now that I'm sharing my screen, another thing that you can do is if you have to explain something in the moment, you can just click here and whatever I'm writing, you will see it. And this is kind of painful to do it, but you can also select text and just type in here whatever you want. Okay, and your students will be seeing what you are doing at this moment, okay? Another thing you can do is, for example, imagine that um, a lot of people were getting um, this wrong. Well, maybe there is something you want to uh, practice with them, okay? You can include, in, in the moment, you can modify your presentation to add an extra activity, for example, true or false activity, 
or um, drawing that we will discuss later, you can ask them a particular question. I don't know, it's tomato, a fruit or a vegetable, things like that. Or just add uh, web content if you want. And again, this is something that you can do in the moment when you are teaching. You don't have to do it before. If you need to modify your presentation, you can do it in the moment. Let's go with drawing. Let's see. So basically for this activity, you can just give them a white page in which they have to write whatever, whatever you want. I don't know, for example, uh, sometimes I use this uh, to practice with prepositions. Right, and I tell them, okay, draw a table, and now draw a cat under the table. All this in Spanish, obviously, right? So I can see what they are doing and see if they are understanding or not. Just um, for this particular activity, uh, they will have to complete the dialogues. So try with this. Click on the drawing. Click on the drawing, and from the bottom, you have to select. TT. It will open a text box. Just uh, drag that text box to whatever you want to put it and start typing. So remember, from the bottom, select TT and start. Yes, perfect. Perfect. Now, again, let me share my screen so you can see what the teachers has. You can only see your drawing, but I can see all of them in here. So maybe I wanna see what Lydia did. Okay, I can click on Lydia. And I can see what Lydia is writing, okay? And I can navigate here, going from one to another, okay? I can also see if someone did not, uh, is not working on the activity, for example, like Lynn. Lynn is not working on the activity. And I know that she's, he or she is not uh, working on the activity because she did not access it, okay? So I'm still waiting for her to join. Um, you can uh, send the activity, but you actually you don't have to. Even if you don't send the, uh, the activity, I still have access. I still can see what you are typing in real time. So this is great, for example, um, if I see that um, Olga is making a mistake with accent marks or whatever, Okay, this is great when, when, when you have your students in breakout rooms, for example, because even if they are in breakout rooms, you're, you still know what they are doing. And if they are making mistakes, you can go to their breakout rooms and discuss those mistakes with them. Okay, so I, I can give them uh, more individual feedback based on what I'm seeing in here. Now, how do I use this when I'm teaching face-to-face -face classes? I also use it first because when they are on their uh, laptop, sometimes you don't know exactly what they are doing. They might be watching something different. Well, if I project this on the, on the screen, on the projector, they know that I, I know what they are doing because I can see if they are typing or not. So trust me, all of them are working on on the activity, but not just that, is that when they do something like this, when you allow them to be creative, they want you to share this with the whole class. So it's super easy just to click on it and share what all of them did in just a minute without, um, <clears throat> without losing any time. I'm sorry. Any questions? Well, 
I will show you how to create all those activities. <clears throat> Let's go with the next one, fill in the blank. Again, it's very intuitive. Just click on the right answers. Actually, maybe we can skip this just to make sure we have enough time. It's basically the same idea. You need to uh, drag the uh, you need to drag the answers to the right place, and at the end you have to uh, hit submit. So you don't know if your answers are correct or not until you hit submit. And while you are doing while your students are doing that, again I can see it on my screen if they are working on it and the results there are they are getting if everything is clear then maybe i don't have to spend more time discussing that topic that's the idea okay let's go to the next one quizzes this is a little bit more interesting again don't worry about the results just select wherever you think and don't worry if you get it wrong it's just to show you what I can see. Perfect, and that's enough. Let me share again. This is what I'm seeing. I have all my students here. I can see how they are answering. I can click and see their answers. Maybe I don't remember the, the question, so I can see what they are answering. And for example, if I see that a lot of people are getting number two wrong, at the end of the quiz, I don't have to discuss the whole quiz. If number five, six, seven are correct, then I do not need to spend time on five, six, seven. I have to spend time just on those in which I see that a lot of people are failing. And this is something that uh, I really like about, about this. This is what I was telling you before, that it gives you immediate feedback that you can use to adjust your lesson plans and just to save time, class time. Um, what else? Let's go with the last one, collaborative board. I use this activity uh, after a conversation activity. Maybe I put them in pairs and they have to discuss pastimes. They have to have a conversation in Spanish about their pastimes. Yeah. To finish that, I ask them to share one sentence, but not about their pastimes, about their partner's pastimes. So basically something that they learn in the conversation. Here, um, Am I missing Spanish? So I'm actually not sure what it says uh, in English, but it should say something like share your thoughts or something like that at the end, right? In that box, just click in there and write whatever you want. For example, I'm going to write. Actually, let me share it. Perfect. Muy bien. Perfect. That's nice. You're sharing words, but you can also share images if you want. Let me show you how. Just 
this one, for example. So this is what I see. I can see all the answers. So for example, if we're practicing with the verb gustar for uh, to like, this is a very special verb in Spanish and it's always nice uh, that the students are writing complete sentences. You can go over the sentences and, and correct any mistakes. Now, let's say that you don't, you don't want to put your uh, your students on the spot because their names are in there. Well, you can also hide names. So this is what everybody will be seeing. You can see the answers, and now you can discuss any mistakes here without uh, anybody feeling bad because, oh, the teacher is saying that I made a mistake. No. They are writing the sentences and you can discuss them as, as a class, again, without uh, showing the names. So you can just type in here whatever you want, or you can add images, videos, GIF, and you can also, for example, let's say you want to do this, you will find it on Google. Just type in there whatever you want and it will find it. You can also allow them to record answers. And instead of words or images, they will be sending audios in here. This is great, for example, if you're using the Nearpod on a student pace uh, link and, and you want them to practice with uh, speaking. Those are all the um, content and activities that we are gonna create today, okay? So now you're experiencing the Nearpod as students. From now, I want you to experience it as teachers. I want you to create a Nearpod, but before that, any questions? Any comments? Can I make one comment? Of course. Uh, Rocio, this is fabulously helpful. Nice. So glad so, to hear that. Yeah. Um, and I uh, I think you should present this at Cotisol. As a what? I'm sorry. Um, Colorado TESOL has a convention this fall. Oh. It would be great if you presented it there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. But this is this is so helpful for my teaching. I know our colleagues are going to love this. What do you teach? I, I teach English as a second language awesome. at the International English Center here at CU. Nice. So yeah. do, you, do you teach face-to-face -face or remote classes? Uh, well, we taught remote for about a year and a half, uh, but now we're back face-to-face -face and we've been back for about six months, I guess. Nice. Well, this also works great with face-to-face -face classes. I, I use it in my face-to-face -face classes too. Yeah, thank you for explaining the benefits of using it face to face too. I could just as you were talking about how you can encourage engagement. Yes. Uh, that that is really really helpful. Yeah. Thank you. And you're also doing something good for the planet because you are not making so many photocopies. So Finally. that's also good. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Um, any more questions or comments? Yes, Susana has her hand raised. Yeah, yeah. Hello, thank you so much. I mean, that's been wonderful. And I've been trying also to do it on, on a tablet and, and the experience is great as well. So that's, oh, that's awesome. another, yeah, that's another way that uh, students can, can engage because it feels more like a, a paper and, and pen, right? But I wanted to ask you, um, how or what, what's the learning curve, right? How long did it take you to become familiar with Nearpod? And also for the students. Oh, how, for this how many classes or or how many seconds 
it takes this, them to learn this. For the students, it's super easy, basically, because it's so intuitive that I don't even need to explain to you what you have to do, for example, with the collaborative board, right? You see that there is a box that says, share your thoughts, right? And you see that there is a three or four um, small, what do you say, boxes next to it for images, for video. I mean, you know that if you want to share an image, the only thing you have to do is just click in there, right? And 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 they learn faster than me, the students, so it's great. And for me, it didn't take that long. I was using uh, Nearpod for all my classes in less than two weeks. When I discovered it and I saw that it was easy, um, easy to use and, and, and easy to share with the students and, and everything, it's actually, I started using Nearpod with the pandemia when everybody was teaching remotely. And then when we started face-to-face -face again, I decided just to keep Nearpod because I, I thought, why not? I mean, as I said, you are you don't you do not need to make so many photocopies, and then they don't know where they put it. Here, if you share a, um, a student page link, they know where it is. It's in Canvas. They know where to find it. They can use it for a review. It's just easier. Sometimes I see them, for example, taking screenshots because with the free account. Uh, it does not record the uh, the student responses. And if someone did uh, run on a, on a fill in the blank activity, for example, and they want to use it to review later, I see them taking screenshots and just putting it on a folder that says Spanish 1010 or whatever. Yeah, Tom. Um, yeah, you mentioned um, students working at the student pace and being able to reaccess the content. Um, what if they want to download a PDF or download some of the content? Can they do that? Or is that only with a paid uh, teacher account? No, with, uh, with the free account, all what, I'm all what I'm showing you today is just with the free account. Oh, okay. Just free account. Okay. So with the PDF, I'm not sure if you noticed when we were there. And I saw it, I was gonna download it. <laughs> I almost did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, they can. They, they can la download that. Yeah. Great. So, for example, if you're creating uh, a document to review for the midterm or things like that, you can just put it in there, and they can download it from there. I, I have to say, this is fabulous for accessibility because having all content in one place. I mean, Canvas is one place. No, but this is really one place. You know, yes. as far as the student's experience is concerned, I, I'm yeah. really impressed. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and there is another thing that you will see when we are working, uh, when we are experiencing Nearpod as teachers, is that there is also, um, what is this called? A uh, reader, basically? Reader. Uh, Assistive reader. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that it reads the text. And, and vocalizes it or voices it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so. Which is an accessibility feature that I don't believe that CU Boulder has on Canvas, but the other campuses do have. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that's, that's great to know that there's the assistive reader option, that's yes. great. Mm -hmm. And it works well with Spanish too, because I thought, oh, this is just gonna work with English. No, it also works with Spanish. It reads everything in Spanish too. That's nice. I'm sure that it does it with other languages. Okay, let's experience Nearpod as a teacher. Okay, don't click on the link, not yet. Let me explain this. Um, you can see a link there for nearpod.com. I would like you to open that. If you already have uh, an account with Nearpod, you can just open your Nearpod account. If you don't have an account, I want you to open that link in a different window, in a different window, not in the one that you're using now, in a different window. Um, you're gonna click on where it says teachers sign up for free and 
is gonna ask you to sign up either using Office 365 or Google or whatever, or just typing all the information in there. If you want the Nearpod to be linked to, to your CU account, for example, uh, just click on sign up with Google or with Office and it takes seconds, okay? It's really fast. If not, you can just complete all the information that, uh, that you have in there. Uh, there is another thing that I wanted to mention. But I don't remember. Well, I don't remember, so it will go back to me. Just click on the on the link that you have in there, nearpod.com. Open it in a different window. Rocio, can I ask a question about the accounts and the different sure. levels? Sure. Have you, it's, I think it's awesome, especially for initially to just to show the free options. Have you decided on like what works best for you now that you've been using it more? Like, did you decide to upgrade to a different account or? I have, I have a gold account with Altec mm -hmm. and uh, I also teach at the University of Denver. So with the University of Denver, I use the free account. So I have both experiences mm -hmm. and uh, what has been more important for me is to be able to save all my presentations because usually I'm teaching the same classes every other semester. So I wanna be able to reuse my presentations, right? What I do is that usually I don't work directly, especially if you have a, a free account, I would recommend you not to work directly on Nearpod but to create your presentation first on PowerPoint or Google Slides, for example, so you have it. And then just upload that to Nearpod. Again, it takes seconds. You will have to be adding manually the activities. Um, but I mean, if you have it on Google Slides or PowerPoint, it's just gonna make your life easier if, if you, for whatever reason, you have to delete the presentation, a presentation on Nearpod because you do not have enough uh, space to storage all the presentation or whatever. I mean, that's what I do, for example, at University of Denver that I use the free account. I just have all my presentations on PowerPoint and whenever I do not have more space, I, I just add them and maybe in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I add all the activities that, that obviously I cannot have on PowerPoint. Thank you for explaining that workflow. I think that's helpful, at least for me to like, see how you actually go through and what your, what your steps sure. are, you know? And we're gonna do that uh, now. Does everybody has access to uh, a Nearpod account? Are we good with that? Are we good to go? Yes, perfect. Then let's go. Um, Excuse me, I just had to create one, like I, I didn't have the option of putting like, what are you teaching? I had to put English. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. so I just, That's just fine. to let you know, like, I don't know if there is the option of select, like the only uh, topics. Yeah. There was no foreign languages, basically. No, what I had, uh, I think that, there was an option that says other, something oh, like that. Okay. That's so where I, I couldn't click. see it. I just put. But that is not gonna. Don't worry. That that is not gonna affect um, how you use the the near pod. Okay. I think that is just more for for them, so they yeah. know what lessons to create, uh, mm -hmm. to add to the library, things like that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. I'm gonna share my screen again if you have your account this is what you should be seeing are we all in the same page yes okay we are going to create a lesson and you can do that from here just select lesson you can also do it from here or just easier 
click here, create a lesson. The first thing that you have to do is to write a title. So I'm going to put Nearpod 1. And now we are going to upload either a PowerPoint presentation or Google Slides, or I'm, I'm sure you have presentations either in Google Slides or PowerPoint. Okay. If you don't, that's fine. Don't worry. We are going to be uh, adding stuff here. But just so you can experience what I do. Once I have created the new lesson and I, I have a title for it, I will just go to my computer, my laptop, and I will upload a Power, uh, PowerPoint presentation that I have, okay? Today, I'm gonna upload one from my drive. For example, this one, I just click on it, select, and individual slides. And now uh, it's gonna take a few seconds to do that. So just do the same on yours. Click on create a lesson, then put a title, and upload a PowerPoint presentation or something from Google Slides. Do you want me to send you to breakout rooms just in case you need help or are we good? I just try, uh, sorry to interrupt, Rocio, okay. it's okay. I tried adding a Google Slides presentation, um, but I can't see where to add the link to the oh you don't have uh, to add a link you will have you will have to go to your drive i see go oh. to your drive and select it from there okay thank you uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lost because near pod add like enter in my drive i don't i don't know exactly what i did but okay. i okay let me do this again i'm gonna share this again my presentation is already in this lesson that I have created, okay? So this is the whole presentation that it was in my drive and now it's in my Nearpod. How do you do that? Just click here, upload files. And you can either select it from your uh, computer just navigate your files on your computer. You can select them from Dropbox, from this thing that I don't know, oh, OneDrive, or from your drive. If you work with Google Slides, usually you, you should have your presentations here. Okay. So let me send you to breakout rooms. If you are if you are done with that, try uploading a PDF. Okay, I'm gonna create exactly okay. yeah, because if for whatever reason you lose access to the near pod, you still have something to work with. You could easily create a new near pod presentation just using the links that you have in your in your near pod and all that kind of things. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, let's continue from here. As you probably already discovered, you can move those slides. If you wanna delete some of them, just click on one and hit delete slide. If you wanna move it, reorganize it, just same thing, just select one and move it to whatever you wanna put it. You see? Now. Um, let's see. Wait, it's almost three ten. Let's see. Wait, it's not where I want to work.
So this is what I was saying, just click one and move it to whatever you want to put it. If you want to delete it, just hit delete and that's it. It will delete it. If you want to add uh, new activities or new slides, you can do it from here. But if you do it from here, it would put it at the end of the presentation. So it will be number 24 for me. But maybe I don't want it in here. Maybe I just want it here. So just click here and add new. And it's going to ask you add content or add an activity. Let's add content. For example, let's add a, let's see. Let's add, um, what is it? Web content here. You will just have to click uh, add here the link that you want to add, and that's it. For example, this is the one that I want to add. Just copy and paste. As easy as that. Save, and it should be in your presentation right there, right where you want it. Okay. Same thing with videos, for example. For slideshow, let's see. Let's add a slideshow. As I told you, usually I use the slideshow for role play activities. So that will require you to have a, a small PowerPoint or small. Um, uh, Google Slides presentation just with the uh, role play slides that you want. Okay. Otherwise, it it will just add a whole presentation. So when I want to do something like that, I create a mini PowerPoint and I put there the three slides that I want to add to the slideshow. You can also do it from here if you want. For example, let's say that you want three slides with. I don't know, one with a doctor, another one with a patient, and a third one with vocabulary, useful vocabulary that they can use for a role play situation. Well, you will do it in here and just find the images on, uh, on Google, okay? Um, we're gonna have to skip a few things because I wanna make sure we have time at the end for questions. Let's go with... Uh, da, 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 field trip. Let's say we want to add a field trip in here. Well, you will click in here. Just select whatever you want. Let's say I want this one, Santiago de Compostela, which is a city in Spain. Wait, no. You will have a lot of options here. Just choose the one that you want. This one, for example, you can hit preview. If you are not sure if you like that one or not, you can hit preview. Make sure this is the one that you want. And if it is, just hit done. And that's it. It will be in there. And basically, that's the uh, that's what you will be doing for all the content that you will be adding, okay? Let's go with activities because this is pretty easy. So I want you to practice with the activities. Let's say that you wanna add in here an activity, a matching purse activity. You can give them instructions if you want, okay? Usually I give them instructions just the fir first time because they know that they have to click on the image and click on the word that goes with it. And if it's right, it will disappear. But if you do it once or maybe twice, then you don't have to do it again because they know how it works. So this is maybe just for the first time. Add images here, let's say CDs, for example, okay? 
I don't know, uh, London, the Big Ben in London. This one, safe. And you will write London. Add another pair. Let's say Barcelona in honor of Susana. Barcelona. This is not what I want. What I want is something different. So I have to go back and be more specific. Sagrada Familia, for example, the cathedral. Okay. And I'm going to choose this one. Okay. Text that goes with this Im image, Barcelona. Done. And you will just be adding pairs as many as you want. One thing that you can do is add a timer. Maybe you want your students to finish in one minute. Perfect. That's the time they will have to complete the whole activity. Okay. Once you are done with that, just save. Do you want to try to do it? Okay, let's go. Remember, choose the place where you want to put it, add new, add activity, and choose matching purse. Rocio, do you happen to know if the platform auto saves while you're doing, while you're adding slides and things, or if you have to make sure you click save? You know, I'm a chicken, so I <laughs> You don't find out. out, you don't want to find out, okay. No, I always save before you're, I exit, okay. yeah. yeah. Actually, um, I think that if you don't save it, it says, um, it gives you a warning. But okay. it's not safe. Okay? Good. Okay. But again, just in case, I always say right, before right. I exit. Uh, in my experience, uh, when I when I try to create a file and I happen to not save it, and when I come back, it says you have an unsaved file, and that would you like to save it? And it yeah. asked me, it asked me that question. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that Nearpod does the same. But again, just in case, I will save it before, uh, before I exit the Nearpod. Yeah, I was talking about Nearpod when I create a file using. Oh, Nearpod. when you do? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. Well, that's good to know. There's a little bit of a fail safe, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, good with the matching purse? Any questions? Are we good? Let's go with the next one. For quizzes, we are not going to do quizzes because it, it, it's pretty similar. You will just add the, uh, add the question. You can select an image, for example, or a recording that goes with that. Um, actually, it's easier. see activity same thing and we are gonna go to quizzes where are quizzes here so this is what it looks like you will type your question you will have different options two if you want more you can just add another one you have to select the right one and one thing that i like is that you can add an image an audio, or you can even record your own voice, for example, which is great if you're teaching languages, for example. If you want your students to practice with listening, you can record something, give them options, and they are practicing with that. And again, you can also add a timer if you want. It's not necessary, but if, if you want to limit the time that they have to take the quiz, um, you can add the timer. 
Let's see. Cancel this. Another thing will be the filling the blank. What time is it? Let's leave the filling the blank for the end. Let's do the collaborative board, this one. Again, you can use this as you want. Usually I use it just to finish uh, listening, um, conversational activity. First thing, I don't like this one, so I want to choose a different background. This is the one that I like. You will give it a name for this uh, for for this board. A description, if you want. You can even add again an image, an audio, or uh, other media. And one thing that I want to show you is you can limit what they can share. So if you don't want them to share videos, for example, it will disappear from there. If you don't want them to record an audio, you can just limit that, okay? And you can also um, select different options, like for example, if they can edit or they cannot edit their responses. If they can see other, other people's um, what other people are putting on the blackboard. Or if you don't select this one, it's just you, the one who can see all in there. But if you select this, then everybody can see what other people are posting in there. And if you wanna approve them first, then you can also select this one. And that's it. And from here, again, it will work as I showed you before, just words or images or videos or whatever you want them to, uh, whatever you want them to share. Do we have time for a fill in the blank? Oh, it is ahead. about 320. So there's about 10 minutes left. Um, we have been doing fielding some questions along the way. Um, OK, let's see. Um, I want to make sure we have time for this last thing, how to put this in Canvas. So let's hit save and exit. Do you have it safe? Yes? Good. Now, this is the presentation. Again, you can share this as a live presentation or student pace. I want to put it on Canvas, so I'm going to share it as student pace. Hit that, and you can just copy a link or you can embed it. That's what Tom was asking me before. So you can generate here a link that is going to be embedded. Go to your Canvas course and there is an integration. You can integrate uh, Nearpod on Canvas, but honestly, I think that it's just easier to do it this way. This is what I do. I will go to the module that I want, create a page. I'm going to say this page is Nearpod. And now I have a new page in my module. Click on it. Edit. And as easy as this. Insert, embed, copy the link. And here it is, just safe. So now when my students go, they can click in here and just, they will be in my presentation and everything will be available for them, all what we did. Let's see if I can find one of the activities. I don't know where I put them. 
like this one, for example, everything should be working. Oh, yeah, this was, yes. One of the activities, Barcelona, Barcelona, London, London. Do you want to try to do it? Go ahead. Let me know if you need help. Excuse me, Rocio. I have a question when you're available. Tom, do you have a question? Yes, please. Go ahead. Um, I, I don't know that the Google slide presentation is appearing correctly. Um, it seems like it, it, the view is different than yours. I have a list of um, thumbnails all the way down in a column on the left. Yeah, it's strange. Uh, I, don't think it's actually, I'm probably not adding this slideshow correctly in Nearpod. Um, when, so. when you have it on Nearpod, did it look like mine or not? No, what it does is it, it in, imports the slideshow as a single pane. And then you can click in there and you can view yeah. the slideshow within there, yeah. but it doesn't lay out all the slides in a grid so that you yeah. can edit them like you showed. I know, I know what happened. Basically, you know what happened. Good. What yes. happened? <laughs> Basically, when you were adding the uh, Google slide presentation, uh -huh. it asks you if you want to add it as uh, individual slides or uh -huh. just as a PDF viewer, I think that it says. So what, you have, what you have to select is in individual slides. Great. I'll try that again. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions? Do we have it on Canvas? Yes? Perfect. Well, we have time for more questions if you want, five minutes or comments or whatever is in your mind. I am mesmerized with this. I am so excited. I want the rest of the afternoon just to start planning my lesson for tomorrow awesome. or changing my lesson for tomorrow and, and adding this. This is, this is wonderful. Thank you, Rocio. You're welcome. Yeah. Yes. It, yeah. I don't know if it's that easy, but you make it feel that's very, very easy. Like just. Yeah, that's one of yeah. the great things about Nearpod. As I told you, it's very intuitive. Even if I don't show you how to do it, it's not going to take you more than five seconds to, to, to know how to do it. It's very intuitive. Um, if you have questions, you can also send me an, an, an email and I'm happy to help if I can. Thank you. Not that I'm an expert or nothing like that, but I have been using Nearpod for almost two years now. And I don't even remember how, how I was teaching before Nearpod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you believe it, this is not paid promotional material. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for making it so accessible and less intimidating you know like susana said sometimes those new platforms are just like okay another account another thing i have to learn how to do is it really going to help my workflow or is it just going to add time um but it looks like a great resource and this as Lindsay said at the beginning during the introduction this will be recorded also um 
Yeah. So available on our website and our YouTube channel later. Sounds good. All right. Nice. And if anybody has any other questions, Rocio, can I ask you one last? Of um, is the free account enough for you know regular? It it is. Okay. It, it is. The thing is that um, you are not going to be able to storage all your presentations uh, from one semester, especially if you're teaching different courses, um, you're going to have to delete some of the presentations uh, to make room for the new mm -hmm. ones. But again, mm -hmm. if you have them on Google Slides or you have them on PowerPoint, it's not going to take you more than 15, 20 minutes to add all the uh, all the activities and the extra content, especially if you already have the links and that kind of things, it's mm. super it's super easy to, to mm. do that. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. One thing that I did not mention is that um, when you're creating a Nearpod presentation, let's say for example, that you are teaching two different sections, same mm -hmm. class, but just two different sections. You don't have mm -hmm. to create two different Nearpods. You're, you, you just have to create one Nearpod presentation, and uh, when you um, generate a link for live uh, meeting, for example, live participation, you will have to generate a new live participation meeting every time. Do not use the same code for two different classes because then you will find that when you when you uh, go to teach the second class, you you will still have all the in your roster all the students from the first class so just generate a new a new one as many times as you want mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's great to know yeah. yeah i i started when i first uh, was introduced to nearpod i got so excited <laughs> and i i started uh, using this immediately but um, i started uh, creating lessons using videos mm. and then it soon you know <laughs> almost <laughs> it occupied all my all my uh, uh storage space. yes yeah. space and then i couldn't continue creating any more lessons but when you that's that's why i stopped using it because i i couldn't create anything anymore yeah but today i think i learned that there are more i don't know i think i might have today i i feel like it, i see more activities available for us to create than, than, than I had before. Maybe, I don't know, is there some uh, additions or um, I'm not those sure. Are, those yeah. are pretty much the same ones that they had like two years ago. I oh, is know. that right? Uh, not I sure think, before that. I think uh, the last time I used it was like a pre-pandemic. Oh. Think, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I am more excited about you know, other yeah. uh, activities that yeah. I can also use. But let me give you a tip with videos. Mm -hmm. If you are using something like PlayPosit or Edpuzzle, for example, mm -hmm. that allows you to generate a link. So instead of inserting the video mm -hmm. in your pod, you mm -hmm. can just add web content. Mm -hmm. And that is it's not going to use that, that much space from your near pod. Uh, but the, re space. the but I use the video and then I I, I insert you know you know open ended questions in the middle and can you still do that using yep. web content? You, yes, yes because when do you know add puzzle or play posit? I don't think nope. so. Well, no. it's basically the same that you do with the videos when you edit the videos on Nearpod. You can do that with tools like play posit or add puzzles. So you can have an account for play posit and add puzzle, for example. Could you and, uh, type it yeah, sure. in chat? That'd be great. It would I, be. I can do that because actually your play posit is for free yes. for CU Boulder. Mm, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to actually add. And actually our assistant director just watched a, a seminar about uh, a webinar about it. So uh, she's going to talk to us about play posit. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, she did yesterday. Oh, that's that's just so, great. Thank you very much. So if you have if you have your videos in PlayPosit or mm -hmm. in Puzzle, you can still use them with Nearpod. Just generate the link and add it as web content. 
So okay. when, the stu when the students click on it, it will take them to the Play Pass It uh, page. Oh, this is great may information. I, may I ask a silly question? Go ahead. How do I delete a Nearpod? Because I'm I'm looking for that, and I can edit, but I don't see delete. It is. <laughs> let's see. If you click, uh, let me share my screen. Just one more. Thanks. Sure. It's actually not a silly question. It's a very it's important silly. question. It's important, though. <laughs> it is. So if you move uh, here, yeah, just click on those three dots in there, uh, and there we go. It. <laughs> Before doing that, just so you know, you can also duplicate your uh, your presentation. Maybe you want to share one presentation. Uh, you will have to give it a different different name. Maybe you want to share one of the presentation as student pace and another one for live participation, not mm -hmm. exactly with the same content. But you don't mm -hmm. want to create a whole presentation mm -hmm. again. So just duplicate it. And on the, on the copy or the one that you want, you can just modify it as you want. OK. Thanks for that tip, those tips. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much. That was wonderful. You're welcome. Thanks so glad that you for, like it. Yeah. Thanks <laughs> thank for you, the Rosia. faculty that came also live. Uh, yeah, that was wonderful questions as well. Yes. Um, Kelly, I don't know if you have anything else to, to add. Nope, not at the moment. Just thanks everyone for coming and this will be available soon online. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Rocio. It was wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rocio. That was excellent. Thank you. Great. Yay. Thanks, Rocio. Yeah. Yes. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye